Good morning and welcome. For those of you watching remotely, we are beaming to you from the newly constructed Drollinger Family Stage, LMU's modern outdoor performance stage on beautiful Lawton Plaza. My name is Thomas Poon, and I'm the Executive Vice President and Provost for Loyola Marymount University. Please join me in thanking our awe-inspiring LMU Choir, led by Director of Choral Activities and Associate Professor of Music, Dr. T.J. Harper. That, that performance was just awesome, and I know it strengthened all of our hearts today. It is my honor to present Dr. Timothy Law Snyder, Loyola Marymount University's 16th president. President Snyder has been a dedicated professor and administrator at Jesuit universities for 34 years. His interdisciplinary experiences in education have led him to transformative teaching and administrative positions at the Wharton School, Georgetown, Fairfield University, Loyola, Maryland, and the Berkeley College of Music. And many of us know that among President Snyder's professional, intellectual, and creative pursuits, he is an active musician and a very good one. I can attest to that because we've jammed a few times. <laughs> President Snyder's many accomplishments since his inauguration in 2015 include our reclassification as the Carnegie R2 Doctoral University with high research activity, LMU leading the way as a top five Jesuit university and a top five national university in Southern California, according to US News and World Report, LMU being awarded a chapter of Phi Beta Kappa the nation's oldest and most prestigious academic honor society, five WCC championships, seven NCAA tournament appearances in multiple sports, go Lions, and key infrastructure additions that include this beautiful stage, two premier residence halls, the Howard B. Fitzpatrick Pavilion for the School of Film and Television, and a third LMU campus in Playa Vista, which is situated in the heart of LA's tech and innovation hub known as Silicon Beach. Undeniably, however, President Snyder's greatest accomplishment has been leading us through the global pandemic, where LMU has emerged with its highest enrollment and its largest endowment in its 110-year history, and where we are abundantly positioned to empower our community to create the world we want to live in. Members of the LMU community, please join me in applauding the 16th president of Loyola Marymount University, President and Professor Timothy Law Snyder. Executive Vice President and Provost Poon, Executive Vice President and Chief Academic, Chief Administrative Officer Lynn Scarborough, you deserve a round of applause for your spectacular leadership over these last 18 months and more. So thank you. We welcome today, in addition to our executive vice presidents, members of the Board of Trustees, led by our chair, Paul Viviano. We have Reverend Scott Coble, SJ, and Reverend Eddie Siebert, SJ, Brian Kabatek, and from our Board of Regents, Martha Blaney. And we welcome, of course, LMU faculty and staff and students. We welcome our Sisters of St. Joseph of Orange, religious of the Sacred Heart of Mary, our Jesuits, our interfaith leaders, and of course, our alumni and friends. We welcome our LMU choir, who double as roadies, led by Director of Choral Activities, T.J. Harper, and producer and visioneer, John Flaherty. Thank you again 
for that jaw-dropping performance. I, I remain in awe. We, we started crying when the students assembled here, echoing what happened just a few months ago. So let's give them another round of applause, please. I thank each of you for joining us this morning in person and via live stream. As part of LMU's recognition of our history, location, and relationship to the indigenous communities in Los Angeles, let us acknowledge the Tongva peoples as the traditional land caretakers of Tavangar, which is the Los Angeles Basin and Southern Channel Islands. And we acknowledge the presence of LMU on this traditional and unceded land. We are grateful to live, learn, and create in this place. This special place where so much has changed and has been guided continually by our fortifying Catholic, Jesuit, and Marymount mission and values, which enable us to take on anything. Please allow me to invite you to close your eyes and imagine what we might have seen had we stood on this spot 20 years ago. This outdoor amphitheater and the beautiful Lawton Plaza, which surrounds it, would have been essentially a parking lot, marking the frontier of what was then thought possible. Who here can remember when William H. Hannon Library was only a longing of the heart? Part of efforts to expand the Levy campus. Now look at it. Go ahead, turn around. Take in its beauty as our intellectual anchor, which earlier this year was recognized with the prestigious Excellence in Academic Libraries Award. In Brancolini, grazie. Think back to when the trustees and administration, including Chancellor Cahalan, had the foresight and courage to invest in acquiring University Hall enabling LMU to increase our enrollment and impact dramatically. And in the recent past, but by today's standards, what seems like just ages ago, who here recalls the thrill of the grand opening of the Life Sciences Building? Or, that's you, Dean Cho. Or the LMU Playa Vista Campus. These are spaces that enkindle interdisciplinary collaborations and exemplify how we seek to transform society by nurturing nimble beings who use their imaginations to create the world we want to live in. And there's more to come. As our friend and 14th president, Bob Lawton, after whom this Lawton Plaza is named, once said, hilltops are for dreaming. To that I add for dreaming up and realizing the impossible. I am ready to realize the impossible and I ask that you join me in readiness. Now understand this might sound daunting, demanding, especially after the year and a half we just endured, but fear not, we have already realized the impossible together. Overcoming the last 18 months often seemed indeed impossible. Pandemic, global, campus closure, lockdown, online transition, all amidst unprecedented social pressures and stresses, a tumultuous election, a racial reckoning and awakening. We are in no way alone in surviving this time, but we at LMU did more. How did this happen? This. How lucky are we to be assembled at this Strahlinger family stage on this beautiful November day? I thank former trustee Karen Dial, thank the Strahlinger Family Foundation, and that includes you, Jim, and we thank the Amundsen Foundation for making this possible, and I thank Dean Bryant Alexander, whose leadership helped land this facility. Bravo. <laughs> and
And as Provost Poon mentioned, just up Alumni Mall, our new Howard B. Fitzpatrick Pavilion exemplifies LMU as the creative campus, a place where imaginations are nurtured and our students' creativity, their diverse stories, their magnificent minds and hearts come to life. The realization of our Mbangi spot, our black student space, has also arrived as a testament to the perseverance, resilience, and focus of LMU's black student body. So exciting things are happening everywhere we look. We witness LMU thriving through new interdisciplinary endeavors like the Academy for Jewish Religion of California and the Center for Media Arts and a Just Society through new graduate programs in entrepreneurship and sustainable innovation, global entrepreneurial management, and our new online-only doctoral program in educational leadership for social justice, which instantly doubled our number of LMU doctoral students, to our record-setting grant total of $4.1 million, to our 13th client, freed from his life without parole sentence by our Loyola Project for the Innocent, to our not one, but our two superstar basketball head coaches. Listen, we got to fill those seats in Gersten for our women's and men's basketball games this season. I'm going to see you tomorrow at Gersten, and this is where men's basketball will pound that little rock into submission. Go Lions! We host, and by the way, when you're there, you've got to stand up. We can't just sit and clap. I talked to Coach Stan about that yesterday, and he's like, these people need to energize their legs. So let's show them this next one. We hosted the largest event in LMU history, welcoming to SoFi Stadium more than 34,000 guests in person, their first public um, event. And we had 15,000 more by stream, family members and friends of the undergraduate, graduate, and LMU Loyola Law School classes of 2020 and 2021 arrived for a once-in-a-lifetime graduation ceremony. I like to call it a megamencement, and of course it was one for the ages. Our faculty, our student development colleagues, our information technology professionals, our campus ministers, our COVID support and response teams, our founding orders and, and interfaith communities, our LMU Vaccination Center, which inoculated over 4,000 staff, faculty, students, and neighbors during spring semester. To you, I say, with each seemingly Sisyphean task, you prove that we can achieve anything, that nothing is impossible for LMU. Imagine had we predicted the pandemic and its dynamics and divined in advance that we would accomplish all these things and more. I'm sure many of us would have used the I word. Yet, impossibly, remote teaching did not stop our faculty and those who support them from providing the world-class education for which we are known. Impossibly. Remote learning did not hold back our students from pursuing academic excellence, growing as whole persons, serving faith and promoting justice, and landing stellar career and graduate and professional educational positions, a continuity of their intended dreams. Impossibly, remote work only made our staff more ambitious and creative to assure that we could keep delivering on the LMU promise. Impossibly, we exceeded our enrollment targets. We returned to campus and in-person learning and co-curricular experiences, if not quite without missing a beat, at least not without losing the melody. The world kept spinning and lions kept doing what lions do for and with others. And here we are today, not quite post-pandemic, 
but in the home stretch, we hope, toward full recovery. Despite all the odds, we have emerged fiscally strong, reputationally strong, and competitively strong. None of these deeds on their own impossible. All of these deeds together, impossible. I know these accomplishments were accompanied by sacrifice and struggle. I can see how stretched each of you are. I can feel your exhaustion. Who's feeling it? So I live it here and there. Hopefully I'm not going to live it here. But I understand that feeling because I'm occasionally struck by it. And at times, each corner we turn seems to reveal yet another uphill battle, often without reward or respite. But in those moments when I seek solace and recenter my thinking, I am continually re-energized by the gratitude I have for each of you. I see your accomplishments. I see your perseverance. I see your care for our students and for each other as proof that anything is possible. I am motivated and inspired daily by this moment of opportunity we have together right now at our great institution. Let's take stock of where we are. I have spoken on this convocation occasion to the need for informed and forthright powers, reason, imagination, and ethical discernment. And LMU's virtuosity with this intellectual trifecta and the way in which our schools and colleges, our faculty in their scholarship and teaching are skilled at weaving these fundamentals together as happens at no other institution. Through our strategic plan and our comprehensive campaign, we are poised to embrace this moment of opportunity in a deliberate way to support and enhance what we already do so impossibly well. By now, I trust you are familiar with our three areas of focus in our strategic plan. If you're not, please take note because the following three commitments will inform and inspire everything we do. Continuing to realize the impossible requires that we first become more inclusive. Second, become more innovative. And third, extend further our global reach and impact. This is our roadmap. First, inclusion. Jason, I have heard from many recently, not Jason, I just saw him. I've heard from many recently that LMU has succumbed to political correctness which has somehow subsumed our mission and that our efforts in DEI are merely an extension of a dissolution of our mission. Nothing could be further from the truth. We advance our proactively anti-racist efforts because of our mission and values. They demand equity for all of God's creation. With Catholic social teaching assuring us that each of us, not some of us, are born in the image of God. Further, we also understand as persons approaching a future chock full of challenges, that will require human solutions that diversity is the font of creativity, the gateway to our solutions. To be ready for the future, not only do we need people from different backgrounds and perspectives, we need all to belong, to be safe, to be nurtured, to be full participants. And let us also make no mistake in where our future is headed. Our students, 
the rising solidarity generation, as I like to call them, demand and expect sophistication in DEI efforts. So colleagues, alumni world, politics, this is not. It is instead a fulfillment of Christ's teaching, a pursuit of a best human and earthly future, and an assurance that we are and will remain a place where students can eagerly allow their passions to take flight and soar. This is why we have made initiatives promoting inclusion central to the new strategic plan and our comprehensive campaign. We will work with our faculty to review our core curriculum, our major and minor offerings, our graduate and professional programs, so that we can address racism and other forms of oppression. We will expand use of inclusive pedagogies that enhance learning for all learners. We will weave together curricular and co-curricular and student life programs that deepen and reinforce these themes. Now, all persons born in the image of God have something to contribute to creating this world we want to live in, but not everyone is born with or acquires the capacity to afford an LMU education. When a person can thrive through an LMU education and use it to make that better world with all in place, except for the ability to afford an LMU education, we must build that bridge that carries them to LMU. This is where our friends and our benefactors, especially those who have experienced the value of an LMU education, can share gifts of scholarship support, spanning across those barriers of impossibility, helping those students to realize their potentialities, enabling them to become LMU's signature persons for and with others. These efforts will help us ensure that the most creative minds, no matter their life stations, can learn here how to symphonize reason, imagination, and ethical discernment in ways that prepare them to lead into our future. Second, innovation. These Kiwis get bigger as time goes on. For those who don't know, the Kiwis are the little robots that crawl around our campus and deliver us food. Innovation. With the external environment changing faster than we can adapt to it, we must lead our students to think critically and creatively for a future full of flux. Our students must be prepared for anything, and no institution has a better opportunity to do this than ours. I've noted before that we are in LA, the creative capital of creativity, and we hover over the crucible of creativity, Playa Vista, in which we have a campus. Couple that with our savvy, dedicated core curriculum and our students' unusual relative to other institutions at which I have worked engagement with that curriculum, and we see a garden ripe for innovation. Again, our strategic plan and our campaign offer immediate opportunities for innovation. We will establish new interdisciplinary degree programs, new research partnerships, new curricular, co-curricular collaborations. We will fundraise for endowed chairs and academic programs in areas of promise. We will build the creativity-readied campus by securing gifts to construct an engineering innovation complex and a center for the performing arts. We will adopt, we will adapt our graduate and professional education offerings to make them more responsive 
to changing societal needs and the evolving horizons of discovery. This is exciting. Third, global reach and impact. Realizing LMU's potential for a boundaryless education demands that we drive our international learning forward, promoting the global perspectives that will prepare Lions for an increasingly interconnected world. We can be proud that our Office of Global Local Initiatives and our participation in the American Council on Education's Internationalization Laboratory Program are already expanding our global footprint and are enriching our students' experiences and their potential to engage the world they're preparing to enter with vigor. By fundraising for new international student scholarships, LMU will recruit more exceptional student scholars from around the world who will bring with them global perspectives contributing to our collective creative enterprise and seeding future intercontinental relationships. Our efforts will include enrolling international students with significant financial e need, many of them the first in their families to go to college. That is, we're not pulling them in so they can be full pay students. We are asking them to join us so that we can expand our global student body in ways that diversify the perspectives and experiences of all who learn here. We also reach beyond the bluff with our visibility efforts. These support our priorities by uplifting what each of you does. In doing this, we encounter the world as it has evolved. Assuring people know who we are and what we do is a continuing necessity for us to assert ourselves into the world's consciousness to the benefit of strengthening our future accomplishments and future ambitions. LMU is rising. You are already advancing our strategic initiatives. You are already helping to make us more inclusive helping to render us more innovative, helping to extend our global reach and impact. Our faculty are innovators and creators who thrive with and bring about meaningful change. Our staff are the lifeblood that keeps us running efficiently, expertly, with equal parts grace and smarts. Our students are compassionate, curious, focused but open-minded exemplars of this emerging solidarity generation. Our campus is a vibrant creative hub where compassionate minds and intelligent hearts daily undertake landmark endeavors. Three tales, people like Fossi Lynn Bianco, who graduated in May 2021 as an electrical engineer ma major and dance minor. Fossey melded his love of math with his passion for dance to envision and create the Acrobatic Acceleration Project. This is a shoe that tracks the acceleration of circus acrobats and uses the results to create digital art pieces based on the performer's movements. Or Veronica Backer Peral triple major in computer science, history, and applied math, whose award-winning documentary, Is Democracy Dying?, examines the nuances of our democracy and how we can preserve it. I was an applied math major and I didn't get near that. <laughs> or CBA seniors Christian Jackson, and Desmond, Des, Hemmons, who received a United Nations-backed award for their inspiring work leading the Brothers of Consciousness and raising awareness about systemic racism and also raising a lot of money at that via Instagram. These are but three of thousands of examples of our students and alumni inspired by their faculty and student development professionals 
galvanized by our Catholic, Jesuit, and Marymount mission, and enlivened by their hopes and dreams to reach beyond what others think possible. So where are we? Because I love to say, where be ye? We could say me, but the grammarians would come after me. Think of this moment not just as a time of pause, of recalibration, of adjustments to the many new normals that now eddy about our existence. This is also a time where the continuing arc of our work, together with the arc of our speciesial development, followed through with intentionality and purpose, can vault us into new realms, unfold vexing conundra, unravel and reorder social disorder, explore where and how faith and reason, religion and science can mingle. This is a moment from which we can, in parallel with the strength of our tradition, courageously dissolve today's impossibilities and even surface impossibilities of which we're not yet aware as existing. We will realize the impossible, be it known or yet to be known, together as we always do. And that which we once thought might have been impossible or that we may discover to be impossible once our work is complete will exist with impact long after we are gone. Indeed, at LMU, nothing is impossible. As your president, your colleague, and your friend, I celebrate you for realizing the impossible and for doing it in the spirit of and in league with love. Thank you. Thank you, President Snyder, and thank you all for joining us today. We now invite you to dine with us on St. Rob's Lawn, right behind me here. Um, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>